Thank you. Um, it's unfortunate that this week things have, the quality of intellectual thought in this country is to decline the degree to which we have to bring a resolution to the floor condemning socialism. But that's the way it is. And recently polls have showed among young people about half have a positive view of socialism. Now, of course, these are young people whose opinions are largely gathered not by personal experience, but by what their school teachers tell them or what they see on television. So that may be part of the problem, and hopefully they'll grow their way out of it. Nevertheless, I do feel it necessary to make some statements as to why socialism is an inferior way to govern and is completely incompatible with people who want to live in a free society. The first thing you know about socialism, of course, it leads to material goods which are not as good as those under a free market system. A lot of that means because the government controls everything, you don't have an opportunity to have competition. The poor restaurant, the poor manufacturer uh, is never forced out of business, never forced to improve, and as the result, it means a poorer society. And a lot of times, the material goods by itself is one of the reasons throughout history you see people leave the Marxist totalitarian or Marxist socialist sort of society and flee towards the free market uh, system. Cubans leaving, uh, uh, leaving to come to the United States. When I'm at the southern border, the Border Patrol always talks about the Cubans, some wealthy by Cuban standards, a lot of Cuban doctors coming here, wealthy by Cuban standards, but still they can become much more wealthy in the U.S. Uh, in the old days of the Cold War, people from East Germany fleeing to West Germany, from North Vietnam to South Vietnam, to get to a country in which there are more goods and more quality. But I always feel it's a little bit wrong to overly focus on the fact that the free market inevitably means much better material wealth. It also deals with the freedom to do anything else. When you have a socialist society, the government in a pure socialist society employs everybody. And even in a partially socialist society, a much higher percentage of people wind up working for the government and have to work for the government. And like all Republicans, in my political career, again and again, I've had people come up to me and tell me things privately that they can't say publicly because they work for the government. Okay, uh, school teachers who come up to me and give a Republican perspective on things or things they disagree that maybe the school board is doing. But because they work for the government, they can only talk to me quietly like they were in the Soviet Union or, or uh, communist China. When I was in Wisconsin and we changed the laws to um, give more flexibility in how we deal with public employees about 12 years ago. All Republicans knew that that was under Governor Walker. All Republicans knew public employees who quietly sided with Governor Walker, but because they worked for the government, the little socialist part of America, they couldn't be openly, uh, uh, openly side with Governor Walker. They had to quietly whisper like we were in a communist country. And that's what happens when you have too many people working for the government. The Department of Natural Resources is another example of that. Again, people coming, saying they're doing things wrong, but they dare not say so publicly because they worked for the government. And of course, uh, in addition to uh, employees who work for the DNR, work for the university, it's not just political beliefs that they may have to hide. In the intolerance area of a very um, liberal political entity, I'm thinking of Dane County, which is where Madison, Wisconsin is, people are, uh, again, in that, where, where the government's so big, they're forced not only to hide their political beliefs, they may have to hide their religious beliefs, um, because they are afraid that when it comes to promotions, when it comes to hirings, when it comes to firings, uh, it could affect them negatively, because such a high percentage of jobs come with the government. But it's not just that. In a pure socialist society, because there's a shortage of goods, the ability to purchase goods can also be dependent on towing the party line. We know that in Russia, or previously Cuba, uh, uh, Cuba the ability to purchase things is dependent on towing the party line. You can work all you want, 
but unless you're a member of the party or toe the party line, you can't get the good quality goods that are there. And that's inevitably something that happens when the government becomes so powerful. Um, other perks are restricted if you don't toe the party line. Things like travel in a socialist state. Over time, you begin to have restrictions, and maybe the opportunities to travel abroad are only uh, given to people who have displayed fealty to the state. Um, one of the things I'm told in Cuba to look out for is Cuba, of course, being an island nation, uh, you would expect to have lots of boats all around uh, the island for people to go and fish, uh, people just to take advantage of the Caribbean. But in fact, there are very few boats because Cuba is a socialist country and they're afraid people use those boats to leave the country. And that's another trait that you have in advanced socialism. Um, other things they may stamp down on you for, they restrict your free speech because they don't want anybody saying anything that might be something the, uh, the government disagrees with. You look at communist China, even though they to a degree have a free market, um, the, the huge uh, government, because they're afraid of any dissent, anybody telling the truth, cracks down on churches. And it seems hard to believe that you uh, cannot openly talk about Christianity, openly talk about Christ in China, but I'm afraid you can't. Falun Gong, you hear about um, in, in China, uh, saying things that maybe aren't approved by the, by, uh, by the government, and therefore people crack down on that organization as well. Um, so, in any event, when young people say they're for socialism, or if you have any children or grandchildren out there who say they're socialism, point out to them the inevitable lack of freedom that comes with it. That uh, a high number of people have to work for the government. And if you have to work for the government, they can promote you or hire you or fire you based upon political beliefs, based upon religious beliefs. In a free market system, there always are, well, really unlimited, almost unlimited number of people you can work with. So many different businesses, and in a free market system, if you don't like to work for someone else, you can always start your own business. That's something that you can't do under socialism, or they want to make it very difficult. So um, I am glad that we, the United States Congress, at least later this week or early next week, is going to go on record saying that we don't like socialism, socialism. It should be completely unnecessary. And the fact that so many young people think socialism might be okay is really a damning indictment of the educational, both K-12 and university system in this country. Thank you. I yield my time.